everyone. This is Candace Dickens, Dope Black Therapist. And I apologize for being late. We were having technical difficulties. I want to give a shout out to our guest that was going to be on, Kim Richardson. So I'm sorry, Kim. But um, we're going to have it on another show, I promise. But this topic is for Generation X and those who love them. You know, Generation X is anyone that was born between 19, let me sure I get it right. 1960 and 1980, I believe. Yeah, I think it's 1960 and 1980. And that's a huge span. I have a nephew who I'm 10 years older. When It could even be 1982. And my nephew and I was a preteen when he was born. And him and I are in the same generation. I mean, that's how big this span is. But even though this span is big, the group is small. We only make up 16% of the population but we make up 50% 50 of managers and leaders in organizations. Ah, I think my sister just jumped on. So we make up 50% of managers. So 50% of us represent people who are supervisors, trainers, leaders in the, in the organization. We are the lost generation. We're sandwiched between the baby boomers and some are still in the work industry and the millennials who are either our children or they're our siblings who are maybe 12 to 15 younger younger than us um but we are the smallest generation but we're powerful because of the fact that we are the leaders and we're also the next generation that's that's retiring after the boomers so we're also the parent of generation z's so for a lot of us either our children are millennials or they're z's and the z's have just turned like 20 21 22 so these are the babies um, and there's another generation after them. But without further ado, my sister, Kimberly Richardson, is here with us tonight. How are you, Generation Z? Generation <laughs> X? Excuse me. Yes, X is in the house. How are you? I'm doing well. I Thank you. Good. You know, I know when X is in the house, when, you know, we say things like X is in the house or hip hop or we talk about Sugar Hill Gang or right, Gang, right, right. And at another video, I was talking about meeting someone at um at Essence. And we were going back today about Houdini and hip hop and da-da-da-da-da. And then someone else came, another group came in, and they started talking about another group of uh, performers I didn't know. Right. And because she has a, a daughter that's 25, she knew all of them. Really? Like, like 19, 21, 22. So I'm like, <laughs> But she was able, I kept saying to people, oh, she's passing because she knows she knows either a millennial or she knows someone who's an older Z. She right. knows all the people, so knows the music. But Generation X, we're a small group, but we're a mighty group. You know, hip hop turned 50 and a lot of us turned 50 or we're in our Very, very much yeah. so, yes. So how are you today? I'm doing great, actually. And I'm glad to celebrate Gen X. I think we still rule the world. We still control. We need to monitor the millennials and disease. I love that. They you need know, I, to be fine-tuned. I, I think a lot of that is missing. Oh, we're going to have a good conversation. Because <laughs> I want to get into that. But why we need, what our purpose is, because there are a lot of, Millennials and Z's who are very upset with us because they feel like we've disappointed them, right? And there are a lot of boomers who feel upset with us because we didn't hold the um, the mantle for the civil rights movement because we're the babies that were born in the 60s and the 70s and the right. early part of the 80s. So there are a lot of generations that are a little bit upset with us, which is why they call us the lost generation because we're small. Right. And we had a big task after uh, Martin Luther King's march, and we were the civil rights babies. Yes. So what do you what do you remember about growing up as a Generation X? And what do you think our role is as growing Generation up, X? I remember the freedom I had as a child. Mm. Being able to go outside at four years old, not far away, uh -huh. but being able to run free outside and play. Mm, you remember that. And it felt good. Yeah. Yeah. Running free. Responsibility. 
Um, I'm not going to lie. That wasn't talked about too much in my household. Mm -hmm. So, um, there, there's a lot of issues that got pushed to the side and, um, it was just a matter of do better. The attitude was to do better than we did. Uh, do better than your ancestors. Yeah. Do better yeah. than your elders. So you know, there was the expectation. More. Elevate yourself. That, that was the goal. Yeah. yeah. That was so the, the goal. So the people who raised us, right? These were the people from who were born in the 40s and maybe right. late part of the 50s, mm -hmm. right? Early part of the 50s. And their legacy to us was do better, work harder, right? Because right. we opened the doors for you. Because our generation was the first generation that was able to, add to which was normalized, in which we were able to go to school with different um, cultures, mm -hmm. different races. Right. And of course, it felt like the norm. Like for our kids and our grandkids, it feels like the norm to have a cell phone. It feels right. like their norm to, to have a computer in every class. But that wasn't right. our norm. We didn't have computers until maybe no. late 90s. Right? Mm -hmm. But they've never known a period to not have a computer. And in our generation, we never knew a period where you couldn't have access to different people. Right. But you couldn't go into an environment where there were people on a bus who were the same race and no one's at the back of the bus. That wasn't our experience. No, not at right. all. But you remember freedom being part of your childhood experience. Yes. Did you, did you feel safer as a child, free to go out to roam? Yes. What was the expectation <laughs> that you remember? I remember some things too. Just to have fun. Every day was, was an adventure. Yes. Like there was never a dull moment. Every day was an adventure. If it rained outside, there was always something to do inside. Yes. We had games. We had toys. We had, um, what was that game you play with a handball and you have a court on the floor? And you bounce the ball on a quarter to make it move. I didn't really. Play that no, Ooh, yeah. I played handball. I'm playing skellies. I'm playing red light, green light, one, two, three. Coco leaves like, oh, Yeah, <laughs> yes. I'm catching um, bees with a, a mayonnaise jar and putting flowers and stuff in it. Things like that. Mm -hmm. But when I look at, you know. Children who were born in 2000 and up, a lot of them find fun on video games. It's not all that or outdoor stuff anymore. It's not the I, right. Yeah. I don't like that because that teaches them how to stay alone, not to interact. It's everything, it goes against the grain of being interactive with other human beings just on a daily basis, if they're, you know, even walking down the street, I see young people with their heads down in their phone and don't know what's going on around them. Mm -hmm. And I've seen people almost get hit by city buses, grown people walking like this. The attention, it, it just takes away. It's too much isolation. Yeah. You think we were the generation that felt that was the last to be connected and aware because I can remember we had things called jams. Remember jams and and this, yes, and would be block parties where we could yes. DJ coming out. Yes. And, people would, and you knew people's yes dance every music. Friday night yes. at the park. Yes. Yep. Yes. Eye contact. It, it, that was a social event. Yes. Call it what you will. It was still a social event. We had something to look forward to, and yes. it was just neighbors coming together. The community coming together yep. and it was always good. A good time was always had. Absolutely. I don't understand why now, you know, if somebody tries to give a function outdoors, there's always an outburst of violence. Right. Always for yeah. some reason. Yeah. And Ooh. that, that needs to be stopped. That's in a whole nother issue. Yeah. Um, the, the violence, but, um, yeah, the freedom is everything because we interact with people better. We resolve issues quicker. We are quicker on our feet. Mm -hmm. 
because we had to stand alone outside. You know, I was in, I, I was, we're siblings, but I grew up as a single child. Right, right. I had no backup. So I was my backup. <laughs> You know what I mean? If I got into something, I better figure out how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. I had no one to defend me, so I better know how to defend myself. Right. Mm -hmm. Which is why I'm going to say something and it, I'm going to issue a trigger warning. Yeah. Um, I don't understand the cyber bull bullying one press of a button or even the off button on your computer can delete somebody. I, I don't understand that. Mm -hmm. I know it's a psychological thing, mm -hmm. maybe because I'm not focused to having online relationships like this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Everyone I have an online relationship, I have grown up with and interacted mm -hmm. on a human mm -hmm. level in yeah. person. Yeah. In person. Yeah. So and this I, is just an advancement to a telephone. Yeah. But I think like this bullying, wherever you go, there's a always a bully. I remember having a bully. But I think that cyberbullying takes to a whole different level. Because I remember having a bully in the third grade, but not bullies. There were never bullies in my entire life. Right. But usually when you, you deal with the bully by you fight. Or you look you you separate from them. They go to a different class. Or you, or they outgrow the behavior, and you stop being afraid. Something happens as a shift, and you're able to go on with your life. But the way it is now, that people, not just one person, bullies you. It's a whole community of people, and right. some of them you don't even know. Which right. is why it's so different now, and that's where the isolation comes from, right? There's no right. one to balance you out. There's no one to say, "Hey, that's wrong." Well, there's right. no one to say, hey, "Let's go for a walk," because you're fixated by this. Right. And this can spill into your community, depending upon what they're bullying you about. Mm -hmm. Because people in your, your circle at your school might see the bullying and continue it, thinking that it's funny. Instead of stopping it. Instead of stopping it. So now we become a culture of voyeurism, where we're watching people. Remember that there used to be this movie, um, what was it called? Was it Shogun's Fun? It was something like that, where people would watch people. And I was like, this is ridiculous. And he's like, who would watch this? And right. now we got reality TV. We got uh, shows like uh, Love and Hip Hop. Right. You know, Atlanta Housewives Black Girls Club. Yes, where we're watching people live instead of living and not being entertained by other people living. Right? They're causing and it's trouble. Yeah. Even at clubs, I've been in concerts and people like this. And I'm like, you're not even present for the music. You're so busy videotaping it that you're not present for the experience. And I right. think that growing up, because we didn't have um, video cameras, I mean, some right. people had some cameras, camera cameras, rich people, <laughs> but we didn't have like video cameras. They didn't come out until like late 90s, 2000, when the phones got more sophisticated. Right. But we were present. Mm -hmm. And it's Always. like, if you, yeah, but if you didn't see it, you didn't know it. Exactly. But now people aren't as present as they used to be. Mm -mm, not at all. And not I'm wondering, all. did we help create a culture that came after us, right? And the millennials and the Zs that allowed them to be, was our person better, them being better and being more autonomous, being more free thinking, being more isolated, being more with technology. Did we want them to be so better that we taught them to be isolated? The better for them come at a price because better for us meant studying more, getting a good job, and right. then, um, getting a nice settled house. You know, better look like something. And was this our version of better? This is not better. You know what this is? This isn't better. This is excessive. Mm. And it's gotten to the point of entitlement. What do you mean by that? Gen Z, millennials, mm -hmm. expect us to hand everything to them. And I can pretty much speak to this, you know, because 
I've experienced it. They want everything handed to them until their world is correct. Mm. They don't want to suffer. They don't want to do this because they're not ready to. Yeah. You're not, you're never going to be ready. You just have to do it. Yeah. Is that entitlement or is that knowing they know their value? Because they, they, are... they can say, I know my value. So why would I do the extra when I know my value? They may know their value, but still want to be handed that silver spoon. Got it. And is that a spoon? And that, that makes it that that makes a tragedy. <laughs> that Got makes it. it tragic for all of us. Were you and I raised by people who worked hard? So we were taught to work hard. And then they figured out that they don't got to work so hard. Right. Right. Like we, we were trained, some of us, not all of us. And something Carmen said, Carmen, hi, Carmen, Carmela Fisher had said, um, we had some freedoms or liberties, but we were also silent in a way. I remember being told you are, you are to be seen and not heard. That's why I believe that we are considered a lost generation because we were silent and hushed. And so are we, are we silent and hushed? And we're also taught, you got to work for everything you get. The more you the work, the more you prosper. Right. And does, and does that show up in the work field? Well, for a lot of us, we have this work ethic where we work until things are done and the generations come after us, they work until they're finished. <laughs> <laughs> right. And we'll right. go, no, no, no. I'm going to say a little bit later. I'm go and they go, no, no. I'm doing work-life balance. Right. And we're like, but the community and this is due and, and they are work-life balance. You have to make, make it yeah. balance. Yeah. So are, are, do we work differently and live differently because we've had two different sets of parents? They've had us. And then we've had people who, because the baby boomers, the, their parents were, what generation were their parents? Oh. Um, World War I or the World War II two, people. Yeah. Yeah. They were, um, but they were. Our parents were World War II babies. So, what was that generation? I forgot the name of that generation. If anyone knows, please put it in the chat box. But they were, they were part of the generation with the big World War II boom, right? Which right. got the world, right. 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 The, world, the world got better. There was improvements, big boom in the economy. So, boom came babies. Exactly. Right. But a lot of the baby boomers' parents were soldiers, or they were something where they had a good work ethic, hard work ethic. If you were someone of color, your parents may have migrated from the South, but there's a work ethic about working the land. Now you're going to work hard up here in the factories. Exactly. And exactly. did we inherit that work ethic? And we did. We did something got that? lost in the translation between Gen X and the millennials. There's something, I don't know exactly what it is, I can't pinpoint it, that mm -hmm. they missed that we have full knowledge of. Mm. I wouldn't say knowledge, but it is something they missed because they are the parents of Gen Z. Yes. My daughter's a millennial. Her son is a Gen Z. Our parenting tactics are completely different. Completely what does, it, what does different. it look like? Um, really, no punishment, no spankings. Um, my parenting, when needed, punishment, when required, spankings, yeah. only when necessary. Mm -hmm. And that's another problem. The generations get away with more because yeah, of the laws that were enforced for abuse. There, there is a difference. I haven't heard anyone really address it. There's mm -hmm. a difference between a spanking and abuse. Absolutely. But here's the difference, right? You and I came up with Oprah, Dr. Phil, who is it? Sally Jesse Raphael. So we grow up being educated about 
you know, right. And Oprah. I, was, I, was <laughs> I watch Oprah at four o'clock every day. <laughs> oh, trying to be grown at 17, up, right? watching Oprah Winfrey. Yes. Yeah. But we grew up with all that literature and information about what's right and wrong about spanking, about child abuse. But the previous generations didn't have that as an optic. They didn't have shows that talked about, you know, the dangers of not having conversations with your children, the right. dangers of over spanking. So we grew up with that. And I'm wondering if that caused us to modify how we parented millennials and how we parented disease, because my kids aren't millennials, they're Zs. And I wonder if that also shows up in how we work at the workplace. Mm. Right? Because well, I know a lot of millennials who are business owners who are like, mm -mm, I don't want to work anybody. I want to work myself. That's beautiful. That is beautiful. <laughs> and, and you know what's funny? Yeah. I didn't share that mentality when I was younger. I I uh, look for it now, though. Mm -hmm. I was content with the nine to five. Five o'clock come, my day is over. Mm -hmm. It's not my problem anymore. <laughs> it's not my problem until I come back into the office. So I never had a problem with that, maybe because I was brought up in corporate America. My mother took me to work with her from when I was four years old. So mm -hmm. I've been in the office. I've seen her start out as an operator for New York Telephone Company. And as she rose, so did I. She became a secretary. Oh my God, we got a promotion. <laughs> but it we becomes communal. Exactly. Uh -huh. Come up becomes out come up. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. She moves up, so do I. So, you know, and I had this to look forward to. And junior high school years, high school years, any day off from school, I spent at my mother's job. I would go there and help the managers out. And they're like, when you graduate, come back, you know, we'll hire you. And yeah, and that was another thing, you know, I wanted to pass down to my children is maybe they would be interested in my field, you know, in the industry. Mm -hmm. And I used to take them to work with me on holidays. School is closed. They right by my side at work the whole day with everybody in the office. Yeah, exposure. Exposure is everything. Yes. And you do that until they don't want to see it anymore. Yes. You know, if they're still interested at 16, take them to work. Yes. Bring them to, they need to see this. Yes. And did they become IT people? Uh, my daughter is now starting to study cybersecurity. <laughs> it's cool. <laughs> that so is it, cool. It, it, she took the long way there, but she finally made it. Oh, that's awesome. Awesome. You know, it's so funny. Out of all my friends, none of our kids have followed us in top professions. My kids have been in my, I've had my practice now for 21 years. And right. my kids have been to my office. <laughs> they even played secretary for me a couple of times. And none of them want to be there. <laughs> they don't want it. No, no. They like the benefits of being a therapist, but they don't right. want to be a therapist. And I've heard that what a lot of parents will say, my kids like the income I have and the lifestyle I create. But they really want to do their own way, become their own people. Okay. Right? And I know for a lot of parents, parents who are boomers, they groomed us to go into their fields. Right? If your mom is an accountant, sometimes you're an accountant. So I know so many people who have a legacy of going into um, of certain fields in their families. Like my mom is a teacher. Now I'm a teacher. Right? Right. right. Or they get there late. Like my mom is a teacher. And now I'm becoming a teacher. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, for college for college students. And I think, but it took me a long while to get there. Now I'm right. a therapist, now I'm becoming a teacher, a, a teacher of therapists. But I think that there's a difference in that they seem to want to go their own way. Uh -huh. I mean, I speak to people who, even when I was hiring people, that the it's a difference in experience. Like even my training is different from right. the way I was trained as a clinician to a younger clinician. Their training is different than mine. Okay. It's more focused on diversity and inclusion and 
being very culturally sensitive and being very gender sensitive and really talking about having, having those difficult conversations about race and culture. It's a big mm -hmm. emphasis on that, right? right? Not just about being ethical, but there's a big emphasis also on trauma where when I was going, when I was going to school, none of that was talked about. Race wasn't right. talked about, right? So I think that with the changing of time, things look different and it creates a divide between our generation, and other generations, because either we had different kind of training, it was more right. intensive or more focused, and they're having a, a different experience from mm -hmm. us. Yes. In the workforce. And I'm wondering just as as people, do you think that our different cultural experiences sometimes causes us to not be able to relate to that generation? And then what does our relationship with the generation ahead of us look like with the boomers? Because now they're our parents and they're getting older. Right. Right. Do you feel like we have we have a lot in common with these two generations, or do you feel like there's a disconnect? Because there's of a disconnect. what there's a disconnect. Why do you think there's a disconnect between there's those two generations? I see it, you see it every day. They just move differently. Um one thing I can say, they are more in tune with the um inclusiveness. Mm. The millennials. Of everyone of everyone, everyone. Right. They are, I would like to say, correct me if I'm wrong, I would like to say they are more tolerable of differences. Yes. The other generation that's more diverse of all the generations. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's not a bad thing. Mm -mm. Because we all should be connected. Absolutely. We should all be connected. Mm -hmm. But the only thing I could say uh, Gen X could be better with is the separation still when it comes to racial issues. Mm. How so? It's our, it's our generation now that are in government, mm -hmm. local, federal and maybe there's some baby boomers still <laughs> hanging around in the senate floor oh there are a lot of baby boomers some people have just retired at 80. like mcdonald's how you say his name i've got his name Mc, um yeah i know who you're talking about he had a head injury um he had two strokes he had oh. well two he strokes had and a head injury <laughs> <laughs> but he's because I forgot his name, but I know he just stepped down. Yeah. He's going to do the rest of his term. But most people are saying, should there be a term based on age? Because most of the people who are in Congress are over 70 years old. Yeah, there should be a term. There should, should be a limit for president, too. Yeah. You yeah. don't want an old, feeble person. Just because he could doesn't mean he should. Yeah. But here's the other part, right? Then they call that ageism. Oh, it it's is. discrimination. It is ageism. I just, but I just you wouldn't it. let an 85 year old drive a, a city bus, would you? I don't know. Depends about the 85. I don't know. <laughs> but here's the thing I don't know, right? I don't know because I do know that I know some 80 year olds who are sharp, who are still driving, who are still cooking, who are still breathing. <laughs> I don't know. But here's the thing that the boomers are actually more active and many of them are still working. So if you're someone who's 50, your mom could be, or dad could be 68 and they are still working. Right, right. Or 72 and they're still working. It's very different from before where at 65, everybody comes out. Mm -mm. People are still in it. And some of our parents who are, let's say 70s or 80s, are still in the place where some of them are still taking care of Generation X and Z and the millennials. X X should be taken care of by now. Um, I know, I know. I, some of them are, but I think many Generation X people are taking care of older parents because older parents are starting to have health issues. Right. Right. That's okay. Maybe, that that's okay. That's nature. That's how yeah. it should be. Right. That's how and it should be. So do you think that this is the generation, we're the smallest generation 
But do you think it's the generation that has the biggest responsibility because many of us are still raising adult children or we're raising people who just came out of adolescenthood. So we're in that place where we're not quite finished raising people or guiding people. And then you've got these parents who, as your children get more independent, parents who might become more dependent. So being right. gives you a seesaw. Have you experienced that as an ex? Where there's like a seesaw kind of experience where either the right. kids can I've heard about such things, but mm, yeah, no, 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 yeah, not at all. Or for some people, it's the seesaw where the kids get more autonomous and then the parents are getting sicker and they need you more. So you don't get that empty nest. That nest gets filled with parents and their <laughs> appointments and their illnesses, you know, or the kids fail to launch. They don't. They're not financially independent of you. They still need to, to lean on you. They still need your guidance. They still need your income in order for them to, to manage the day-to-days of life. And then you've got parents who might need you. So you so it puts you in another place as an ex where you got now parents leaning on you, adult children leaning on you, and maybe even grandchildren leaning on you. And then you you might be a manager. So you've got employees leaning on you. So you've got yes. three places. Where everyone's leaning on you. Right. Where are you supposed to go from there? Where do you go from there? Uh, the failure to launch children. Mm-hmm. There's an app for that, I believe. <laughs> there is an app? No, there's not. Is it really? <laughs> ah, there's a, I know there's a lady on one, um, Instagram <laughs> who's like, take those kids. There's there should be an app for that. Um, that, that would solve everything. There should be like um an eject button for them. But it can't be able to launch. Yeah, for fi- <laughs> but they might not be able to launch because student lo- loans are so high. That's one thing, right? Because school has increased, which is debt increased. Or maybe they have failed to launch because they don't have direction. Because maybe we have given them so much room to figure it out that they're taking the time to figure it out. That could be a mistake. That definitely could be a mistake. Tell me, tell me more about that. But I think it might be a mistake. Giving them too much room or ultimatums. It's you should by high school, you should have a plan. Work or schools, not difficult. Or if you want to venture out, if you want to travel, I say mm-hmm. join a service. Got it. It makes sense. You get to see the world. Yeah. You're away from mom and dad at 18. Mm-hmm. You know, you get to, to test your wings out. Mm-hmm. And they're not going to let you fall mm-hmm. unless you have a health issue. Right? Right. right. Um, it's just a bad situation. Sometimes parents, as myself, fall ill and the children, you know, have to care for us. But it it's it's a process. Everything's a process. Right. Things happen for a reason. And again, you have to find that balance. Yeah. So that they can support you as you're supporting them. Mm-hmm. Right. So that's the balance that happens. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. And with, within that balance, we want also, you know, because there are a lot of generation X people who have fallen ill through the illnesses. Mm-hmm. Or things have happened that there was no fault of their own. And sometimes the children come in to help. And what we'll say to people, and it's just, we talked about this on the last show, make sure that you're helping the parent, right? But not sacrificing your life to help the parent. And right. the parents, make sure that you're helping your children if they fail to launch, but that you're not enabling them to stay disabled. Because sometimes people never launch, right? They never get that stride but they don't figure it out or things don't go well with them. And what some parents will say who are exes is that, well, their childhood is extending into their their 40s or until late 30s. Where I'm still stepping in and paying the rent or I'm paying the phone bills or I'm paying the kids' school. I'm still stepping in and I haven't had an opportunity to step out. Or the the kids will say, you know, um, I haven't had a chance to, to really have a life outside of my parent because they've always been very sickly 
or there's always something happening. So they never had that opportunity to have with other children. An outside or experiences. An outside experience or the separation. Right. Yeah. And that's not fair. No. That's not fair to the child. It's not. It could be for other reasons too, financial reasons, not just mm -hmm. health mm -hmm. issues, you know, and it holds the child back mm -hmm. from, from, you know, going out on their own. Right. But I had a therapist recently. I overheard my one of my therapists telling one of her clients, I'm never moving out. I'm never leaving my father. He's going to have to throw me out the house. Right. I would say she's in her mid 20s, late 20s. I don't mm -hmm. know. She She's young, adorable, because she said her boyfriend was pressing her about moving out. She told him, no, mm -hmm. never. <laughs> she yeah. said, I will never leave. Yes. Never. <laughs> and I thought that was the funniest thing because she was very honest about it. Mm -hmm. She Absolutely. has no desire to leave home. Yeah. She knows what the rent is out there. She has, she's a professional. Yeah. She's a physical therapist. Mm -hmm. She's not yeah. leaving. <laughs> Yep. She's not leaving. I said, okay, at least she knows she's not going to leave. You know, she's not going to pretend that she's yep. going to leave the nest sometime within the next year or so. Mm -hmm. You know, but we prepare our kids to be adults. I think that's the biggest thing. And either they get it or they don't. Right. Right. How much more do we have to do after high school? It's your life now. What are you going to do? And that's the generation. I, I can't, I can't live your life. Right. I got my freedom June something. I don't know. June 24th, 1994. <laughs> no curfew. I told my mother and my grandmother, the day I graduate, there is no more curfew. Don't ask questions. See you around. Yeah. <laughs> that was your emancipation day? Yes. Yes. Yes, and it was beautiful. Yeah. That was and a great it, summer. Graduation, it, then my birthday the next month. And then I started at the phone company, my first job. Yeah. Thanks to good old nepotism. Yes, I said nepotism. Good old nepotism was very in the So you had a hookup. And and here's the thing, right? <laughs> Most of us get in through nepotism and networking. Right? It's who you know. Exactly. And that's how we open doors. Yes. For our children, and that's how our parents open doors for us. Yes. Because we do yes, yes. Through networking, but we also do sponsorship where we open doors. So we be like, hey, I heard about this job. Let me call you up. Let me bring you in the room. Because of the fact that we realize that we all need that beginning. The only problem is that when we open those doors for our children and they keep going through the doors and then come out the doors and they go <laughs> through the doors and they come out the doors, right? Same, but they, same thing could happen with parents. Right. When they, they're retired. And then they struggle, struggle because they retired too soon or they didn't plan it out. Right. Right. So then we're stretched. Mm -hmm. we are, this person just got autonomy and freedom. And, and you, as happy as you were when you were emancipated, I bet your parents were happier. Right. Because they get they weren't happy when you emancipated. When you were like, I'm a woman. I got my own job, make my own money. They weren't happy. They just worried about my safety. Oh. Uh. But it, it, I see, even though I emancipated myself, I didn't yeah. abuse it. I wasn't 18 saying bye, mom, on a Friday night and coming home Tuesday morning. That I did not do. With love and respect, that's the, that was there. I was still under her roof. I knew that. Two, mm -hmm. I now have a job mm -hmm. in corporate America. I have a nine to five. I knew I had a curfew Monday through Friday, Monday through Thursday. I was in bed still at nine o'clock as if I was 
still in high school. Right. So there was a certain level of respect. But what happens, and I'm not trying to stereotype, but what happens though is that there's the absence now of a power differential. Right. So when a child feels like they're an adult or feel like they're enough, they become the equals. And if but many people who are younger, it feels like communal living where, yeah, you're my parent, but you're also in my community. Right. And I don't see the power structure. I just see another human in front of me. And I think for Generation X, we see the power structure. No, I'm the parent. And even though you might be 40 or 35, I'm still the parent <laughs> in the house. I'm still on the mortgage. Even right. If you're giving me something, there's still that structure. But I think that for a younger generation, power is not seen as a good thing. It's seen as a divisive thing. And I think something Nikki just chimed in and said, um, we could do better with Generation X. And that somehow we came, we by being different and being more open or by society changing, the millennials and the Zs have gotten an experience where they get to be free to be who they are no judgment and they right. get to be and they get to see the world without seeing hierarchy without seeing have to's without seeing commitments right. is that necessarily a good thing i don't know what do you guys think i, I, don't, think so. do I don't think, think, it's think so thing? i was out today in my new environment yes and it, scared line up. Me, <laughs> it scared me a little bit because I saw a few, I guess, Z people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, God. If they're going to take care of the millennials, it's not going to happen. Why do you think it's, it's not going to happen? What's not going to happen? Everybody talks about, oh, don't judge, don't judge. Right, no judgment. I didn't know of, it was in vogue to walk around looking like you just stepped out of uh, Barnum Bailey's Ringling Brothers Circus in broad daylight, and it's not even near October 31st. No, I'm no. sorry. I'm sorry. I no. Finding another problem, the reading the articulation, mm -hmm. school, just school, period. <laughs> right, right, right. And, and I'm reading some of the comments. This is what Nikki said again. She said, we help provide a life for the kids to become whatever they want to choose to be. Like we're the generation that was, you know, free to be me and you, free to be you and me. Remember that that, that show? We're the Sesame Street proper generation. We're yes. the <laughs> company, right? Well, yeah. You can choose to be whatever you wanted. You didn't have to be fit into the stereotype. And then our kids learn the biggest thing, the biggest takeaway from us was you can choose, right? Like we were, I can choose to be something that my grandparents didn't get a right to be because of racism or sexism. And then we, our kids learn from us, they can choose beyond that. Right. They can even choose how they show. I think Monique is in our generation that talked about coming to the bonnet to the, to the airport. And that people are saying, you know, I want to make a choice, even how I show up at work, how I show up in my family, how I show up in the community. I want to make a choice to just choose. Right. Mm -hmm. And and sometimes that puts a disconnection because we're looking at what's appropriate and they're looking at what feels right. Right. And that might be the, the distance between us and the younger generations and the older generations. They're still looking at us as baby from the baby boomers perspective of how things should be right right do you they do you see differences between how you think and the boomers think or do you think it's the same um i will tell you it's almost neck and neck hmm. you think the, so? the, the way we approach things and i think i'll think it i'll train of thought is on the same curve. You think so? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because it's, it's, that's the generation, the baby boomers ruled us with that iron fist. Some of them did. Some of them did. Yeah, absolutely. 
But and you know what's interesting? Even, even not resorting to that, but the standards, the expectations were there. The yeah. talking tools were there. They expect you to do this. They laid down the law is basically what I'm trying to say. Yeah, absolutely. So we adhere to it. And uh, what it did was instilled our values in us. Yeah. So we still have that. Gen X still has that. Yeah. That's what we got from yeah. the baby boomers. Absolutely. So we got a sense of values and a structure from them. But you it need was structure because without the structure, everything just becomes chaotic. Right. And maybe that's what shows up at work where we come in structured because we're now we're the managers, we're the leaders, we're the organizers, we're the directors. We're coming in structured and they're coming in fluid. Right. 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 Yes. Yeah. We're coming in like the way we're raised and they're coming in fluid. But mm -hmm. then there's a structural part of us, which I, I always say to people, you know, baby, I mean, Generation X, we were born during civil rights, but sometimes we have this, we are the generation with the least rights because we're so responsible. Because everyone in the boomers wasn't responsible. Right, right. So everyone's, they kind of in. passed the torch to us. Right. Yeah. But we didn't know it was past us. <laughs> and, and sometimes some of those boomers may have dropped some torches right. that we became, <clears throat> that we picked up and we became the overfunction generation. Right. You know, because we had liberties and rights that they didn't quite have. Like the, if we look at our parents in the civil rights, a lot of them were 18, 19, 20. So they, they benefited from some of the things that were passed in the 80s or the 70s with affirmative action, some things that they benefited from that we also benefit from. Mm -hmm. But the expectation from sometimes our parents were, we were to be these people who would who would be their come up. Oh, we were following their footsteps. Right. Right? And so we've had a high bar to, to meet. Yes. Right? But what happens if you're an ex and you never meet that bar? And you Ooh. all live in a disappointment. That's something to live with. It, it is something to live with because sometimes even the generation X, your parents could be in their seventies. And if you've never felt like you've met that bar, you live in the feeling of disappointment or if you've, oh, if you've always felt like, wow, I feel like I'm the adult dealing with a parent who's like a child because they're still on, you know, love and peace and happiness or whatever. <laughs> right. <laughs> you might be over functioning in both places for both generations. Mm -hmm. And that if that's the case for you, sometimes, Retirement doesn't look like it's coming anytime soon because people are living longer. Boomers. Yes, they are. They are. They are. They are. They're wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> the longer they live, the longer they work. Right? And they're an amazing generation because a lot of them are in great shape and they're yes. so very active. But it puts us in a seat. They, they put a ceiling on us because if we're mid level, if we're mid level management, they are the management. Mm -hmm. And they're not going anywhere. Exactly. Right. And, but what happens is that they don't go anywhere. And then there's an explosion of millennials. So we get stuck like right here. Right. Right. Well, they, if they do lead, we're, we're leading a, a large population and there aren't that many of us. Mm -hmm. Right. Are you sure about that? We, we're 16% of the workforce. But we're fifty percent of the managers, okay. which is weird. Um, we are the smallest generation. The millennials, I think, two or three years ago, just surpassed the boomers in numbers. Oh wow! Yeah. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. Which wherever you see, which is where wherever you go, you see you see boomers and you see um, millennials. <laughs> <laughs> they outnumber us. <laughs> <laughs> but we still control everything. 50%? We're the 50% of all managers and mid-level managers. The boomers need us, and so does millennials and the, the Gen Z. Yeah. We are stuck in the middle, right in the middle of this. Right in the, right in the middle of it. Right. But it's, it's a blessing to be Gen X because I think we are so revered. 
And it's like, you know, I can sit here and brag about what was missed mm -hmm. from back in the day, the dress, the freedom. Yes. Just, just life was different. Yes. The way you moved was different. Absolutely. It was beautiful. <laughs> it still is beautiful. Yeah, it is. It's different, but it's it's still beautiful. It is. It is. But I think we can make the most fun of this too. Absolutely. Absolutely. And and I think that's the beautiful thing, beautiful thing about being a Generation X, that you are either in the early 60s or you're all the way in your 40s, late 40s. Mm -hmm. And one of the things for us to really think about as Generation X is it, we're up next. It's our turn. Right? We're too young for many of us to retire. Right? right. Because people still need us. But one of the things that we have, to, our biggest takeaway is, what do you need for you? What is your vision for you? Because we grew up shaped and structured by someone else's vision and rules. What are your rules? What do you want for you? What's your why? Why are you doing what you're doing now? Is it because you've, you've been raised to be this person who's a hard worker and that's your value system? Or is your why because of the fact that there are people who are younger than you who depend upon you? Right. And how you create that space for you so that you have a number of when you end. Because for a lot of us, we don't think about ending because there are two generations above us and behind us who still need us. Right. But for everyone. But we have that drive. I think we have that work that. Yeah ingrained in us that desire to work to if you know you're good at something go do mm -hmm. it absolutely do it till you can't do it anymore absolutely do it until you don't want to do it anymore right right don't right. do it till your body stops you do it until your spirit stops you go i don't want to go to work today if you have those days back and back it's time for you to come out Exactly. Right. Exactly. Because I think for a lot because of people, there is a cutoff point. We should, you know, retire. Yes. And enjoy the rest of our days. Mm -hmm. So Absolutely. why not? Yeah. Everybody's clock is different, though. Absolutely. Everybody's and we, we want to be clear that everyone's clock is different, but you have to know your clock. Right. Right. And we get lost. That is goal, and hopefully yeah. you'll get to that goal. Absolutely. And but be, then you can proceed from there. Absolutely. But be clear about what the goal is, what the number is, mm -hmm. right? And don't let fear stop you because sometimes we're afraid that if I come out and my boss who is now 70 leaves, who's going to take his place? Not this one, not this one. So we we overwork. We stay too long. Like you're saying to look at the party, the party is not good after a while. <laughs> right. We have to make decisions based on who we are and what we want. Mm -hmm. And what our next vision for our life is. Exactly. Because right? we Everything have to have be planned life. out. Absolutely. And people can live without us. And it is our job to prepare the next generation behind us to take our spot. And it doesn't have to be the way we do it. It just has to be done. Whatever the works for them. Because we have to wash our hands of them at some point. And and let the chips fall where they may. Absolutely. So it goes back to <coughs> what Carmela said. <coughs> we're the generation that were seen but not heard. But we can become the generation that gets heard and seen at the same time. Because we're in the room. And being the smallest doesn't mean the weakest. No, of course not. Uh -uh. Of course because not. Because that. Here. Nobody, not to my face. Exactly. Since <laughs> <laughs> you're amazing, thank you for being on the show and spending a little you bit of extra time. You're so today. welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. You're welcome. And for all those Generation X's, you're up next. Make a vision for you. Know that you deserve more than life and could ever give you if you're silent. Speak up, speak out for you, advocate for you, but have that vision about what happens next. Listen to your value system. Be clear whose value system is. Is it yours or did you inherit it from a boomer? And figure out why is your why. Is it because you're afraid that the generation behind you won't make it? If that's, if that's your fear, challenge your fear. There are more than enough. And you deserve more than enough. Right. So good night, everyone.
Scott, thank Good you, <laughs> Bye.